Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem, and then we'll solve it together. All right, so we've got some rational expression where there's uh, the fractions and in the fraction denominators are variables. And we're told that a student multiplied both sides by the least common denominator. We want to know which of these is true. So before we even look at these choices, let's try that strategy. Take 2x over x minus 2, okay, minus 11 over x, and that equals 8 times x squared minus 2x. So what is the least common denominator? Well, it's just x minus 2 and x. And I know that because why? We have x minus 2, we have x, so their product, and this denominator over here is the product of x and x minus 2. So it checks out. And when we multiply that in the first term, the x minus 2's cancel, and we have, we're left with 2x times x. So we're left with 2x times x. Then we're left with 11 times x minus 2. The x is canceled there. And finally, we're left with just 8, because x squared minus 2x cancels out with its factors here. Then we're left with a quadratic, 2x squared minus 11x plus 22. And let's just subtract 8 over here, equals 0. And that means 2x squared minus 11x plus 14 equals 0. OK, so at that point, I just want to use the quadratic formula and see what's going to happen. OK, so extend my page, I room. So x equals the opposite of b, so opposite of negative 11, 11, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 11 squared, minus 4 times a, 2, times c, 14, all over 2 times a, 2 times 2. All right, wow. What does that get us? Well, 11 plus or minus the square root. Let's simplify the, the, the discriminant together. So we get 121, that's 11 squared, minus 4 times 2 times 14. OK, 9. Don't need all that space there. Over 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So that gives us two things. The first one is 11 plus 3 over 4. The square root of 9 is 3. 11 minus 3 over 4. And that means 8 over 4, or 2. And then 14 over 4, which is 7 over 2. So there's potentially two solutions, 7 over 2 and 2. Let's go back up. So I'm going to write that down over here. So x could equal 7 over 2, potentially or it could equal 2. All right. Do we know if they're solutions? No, we don't. And in order to figure out if they are solutions, we need to plug them in and see what's happening. So first of all, when I start to plug in 2, right away, I notice I have x minus 2 here. And 2 minus 2 is 0, and that's undefined. So we know this is extraneous. So the only possible solution is 7 over 2, right? So. Uh, cross out choice 2. The reason we cross out choice 2, we don't know if 7 over 2 is extraneous or not. We could plug it in and figure it out, but we don't need to with these choices. Because 7 over 2, if it is an extraneous solution, uh, then 2 would also have to be part of the answer, because we know 2 is extraneous. So I can eliminate this one. It doesn't even include 2 as an extraneous solution. Maybe that's, is that wrong reasoning? Am I being too hasty? I guess I am, because it says which statement is true. It could be true that 7 over 2 is extraneous. Right? I apologize. Um, it's not the complete answer, but that could be true. OK. 0 and 2 are extraneous solutions. I can cross that one out. I know that 0 is not a solution. I didn't get that as a solution. Um, so I guess in order to figure it out, oh no, I have to plug in 7 halves. I believe I do at least. So how do I do that? Well, 2 times 7 halves here. Do the math. And then down here we have 7 halves minus 2. You know, this looks terrible. Let me scroll down and do it. OK, I'm sorry. So we'll do this math. So we have 2 times 7 halves. And that, that's not so bad. Those will, will cancel. 7 halves minus 2 minus 11 over 7 halves. That should equal 8 over 7 halves squared 
minus 2 times 7 halves. All right, so how do we do this? 2 times 7 halves, the 2's cancel, that's just 7. 7 halves minus 2 is really 7 halves minus 4 halves. 4 halves is 2, and that is, of course, 7 minus 4, which is 3, so it's 3 halves. And then minus 11 over 7 halves, I'll leave that alone for a moment. Over here I get 8 over, tons of fun here, 49 fourths minus 7, which is really 28 fourths. Okay. Now 7 over 3 halves, right, we do 7 times 2 thirds, which is 14 thirds minus 22 sevenths. That should equal this over here, which is 8 over 49 minus 28 is, let's see, 19 plus 2, 21 fourths. Okay, oh boy. So here on this side, we have 8 times 4 over 21, which is 32 21sts. Okay, I'm, I'm liking this a little bit because 21st, 7, and 3, they all meet. So I multiply my first fraction by 7 over 7. Oh boy. So that's 70 plus 28, so 98. This is all over 21 now. And then 3 is 66. And the difference of 98 and 66 is 32 over 21. It checks out. Now I would love to know other faster solutions for this. I felt like plugging that in was really painful. Um, so I guess, sorry, so uh, this is not true. And this is not true. And so the only true statement is one, right? I, I, I was inclined to cross out uh, four and two. I knew I could have crossed out three because zero was not a solution at all to be, even consider. But two and four, needed. I needed to evaluate seven over halves to, to make sure that that was not an extraneous solution, I believe. Uh, but if I'm missing something, please let me know. I felt kind of arduous.